All right, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to our presentation on optimizing Doherty power amplifiers. The uh, company is Android Microwave, uh, based in Syracuse, New York. My name is uh, Hans Peter Ostergaard. Um, as an introduction, uh, I think most of you are familiar with Doherty amplifiers properly, since uh, you, if you showed up. Uh, Doherty amplifiers have been used for many years and uh, is still the preferred choice today. And um, the basic principle is very good, of course, as you have a high peak to every systems where we don't operate at the maximum power level uh, very often. So we need to have a system that gives you efficiency also at the lower power ratios. And Doherty amplifiers work very well for that. Uh, as you get more and more peak to error rate, there's a lot of systems now being done with like a dual Doherty. But I'll talk today about the, the basic principle and what we think uh, is the best approach to, to making this uh, system better. So the basic uh, configuration is you have a driver state. Uh, you then split up your signal into two uh, amplifier branches. The main amplifier takes care of the air rates and the peak that takes care, obviously, of the peak ratio. So the peak amplifier only operates at a given threshold. So for this system to work, uh, you have to use a Doherty combiner. Uh, the most basic implementation of this consists of a matching network where you match into a 50 ohm point. Then you use a 50 ohm transmission line that's a quarter wave length long. And that connects, again, transformed out to a simple uh, 50 ohm uh, output, so simple transformation with quarter wave transformers. Uh, depending on, on the peak to average system, the digital pre-distortion you're used in crest factor reductions and so forth, there's different uh, split ratios you use. So you can use a 3 dB coupler, 2 and a half dB, 5 dB, different ratios. Uh, but what I'd like to talk about here is the Doherty combiner itself. So if you look at implementation of a Doherty combiner, if you print a 50 ohm quarter wave line, this one is centered at 940 megahertz. It's on a 30 mil thick Rogers 4350 board. Uh, you get significant lengths, almost two inches of a line. Uh, at the quarter wave, and the low impedance line is 35 ohm is quite wide. So it's very difficult to squeeze this into a small space. Uh, when you start meandering the lines, uh, you can squeeze things a little smaller, but you can't make it uh, as small as you would like to. Even at the higher frequencies, where again, when you try to bend the lines, you have these fillets, these meanders. I'm sorry, the mouse is not working properly. Uh, you have these fillers and meanders, and when you add those, the accuracy is not very good, most PCB houses, so the repeatability of the Dora combiner is not very good. If we use our multi-layer technology, uh, what we call our Singer surface mount uh, components, we are able to reduce the size significantly, and we use a very high performance PCB material uh, that's very low in loss. And we're able to use multiple layers, so the X and Y can be reduced significantly. Uh, so even at the higher frequencies, we're able to get down to a size that maybe one-fourth the size of what you can print. With the release of more and more dual transistor packages, where the leads come out with maybe five millimeter spacing, uh, it doesn't make any sense to have a combiner that's like an inch or two long. You would prefer to have a Doherty combiner, you can kind of match straight out from the transistor and into the Doherty combiner. So you don't waste uh, real estate. So we developed these packages. Uh, we have a family of products, what we call an E-size. It's 0.2 inch by 0.56 inch uh, long. And it fits very well with a lot of the transistor packages available in the market today. They can handle up to 200 watt CW power and peak ratios that are t about 10 times that. Uh, as you see, the size reduction is significant. Not only that, uh, if you do a comparison of insertion loss, we have a here shown, even with a thick PCB, so a thicker PCB makes, of course, uh, the transmission lines wider and lower loss. But even utilizing that, if we use uh, we compare the performance at room temperature to a Singer multi-layer uh, Doherty combiner. 
we are able to achieve the same insertion loss as you can do on a very thick, expensive uh, Rogers uh, PCB. So, uh, of course, if you use FR4, it's going to be significantly uh, higher insertion loss, and most people won't dare do that unless they have a lot of room in the budget for loss. So most people don't do that, but some do, actually. Uh, so the E-size packets I showed a second ago is uh, it's quite a, a reduction in size, significantly reduction in size. The latest uh, product range we started releasing now is only half of that. We call our Pico packets. It's five by six millimeters, and that's optimized for the for some of the newer transistors where the leads are extremely close to each other. So uh, maybe only two, three millimeters, uh, and thereby we're able to make the size reduction significantly less. So the products we have available at the moment is. Uh, they're all narrow bands because they use the transmission line approach like you do on the printed. So they're all relatively narrow. Uh, so we have like the 700 megahertz band, 800 megahertz band, 900 megahertz, 18, 19, oh, 21 uh, at the moment. Uh, the first product we introduced in our Pico packets is, uh, is for TD, uh, SCDMA in, in China. So it's uh, centered at about 1,900 megahertz. Uh, we are expanding that. I'm sorry. We're expanding that product range to go all the way down to 700 megahertz, at about 50 watt uh, average power level. So still significant uh, power for something that's only five millimeter uh, by six millimeter in size. Uh, there's a lot of details around how you specify it because the Doherty combiner it works as a one way when only the main amplifier is working and it works as a two-way combiner when both main and peak are, are operating. So there's a lot of details in our data sheet relative to how we test it and how uh, the product specified. One important thing I'd like to point out is what we call the port extension. Because we are in a surface mount packets, it takes uh, from the PCB up into the strip line, uh, we have some transition that has some physical length to it and it's going to add some phase length to it. The higher the frequency, the longer that offset line is, if you want to call it that. So there's, uh, there's some length you have to take into account when you do the matching of your transistors. Uh, we provide S parameters uh, off our website where we have de-embedded to the edge of the part, the physical edge of the package, uh, and it's very accurate from a phase point of view, and you can use it directly in your simulations. And the customers that use these products already have had very, very good uh, first time through whatever uh, performance because of the accuracy of the data provided. Uh, of course, it also depends on trans transistors vary, of course, also uh, quite a bit. So there's, uh, there are some variables. But from a repeatability point of view, because of the etching method we're using, uh, a lot more uh, high performance than your typical PCB uh, vendors use. Uh, we're able to achieve significantly better uh, repeatability from a return loss and phasing and everything. Uh, we have a lot of other products ex extension to the family. So we're doing products that are wider band because of the new uh, requirement for new amplifiers. Uh, I can't cover all the details around that at this point. If anybody's interested in that, they're welcome to contact me. There's a handout, uh, I believe if you scan uh, your badge, uh, you can get a memory stick with a presentation, and you're welcome to uh, contact uh, us or uh, uh, Richardson. Uh, as in, uh, yeah. We also have a handout for the, some of the specific Singer products we have available today. Uh, one last uh, thing I'd like to add is everybody that has a lot of experience with power amplifier design know the benefits of a balanced amplifier. When you have a balanced amplifier, you can handle some pretty significant mismatch on the two legs you're combining with the 3dB hybrid. So because the Doherty amplifier, when only the main amplifier is working, the, oops, the input to the peak is still going to be there, so you're still putting power into it. You're not turning that off. So that power is going to be reflected back to the input. So you always see a significant uh, 
reflects in coming back from the Doherty amplifier. If you're using a balanced approach and have two sets of Doherty amplifiers, you basically remove this reflection coming back from the Doherty amplifier because the input is split out of phase, equally split in power, and in 90 degrees out of phase, when it reflects back, those reflections, when they are equal, reflect back into the isolated port. So you don't see it on the input. And thereby, you don't have to deal with this ripple or this reflection coming back. Uh, and of course, you combine it the same way in the output. The only way that's possible today is because you don't have to print Doherty combiners that are two inch by one inch or some big, uh, big size. When you can buy something that's half an inch by 0.2 inch, you can actually implement this. And the additional benefit of this is also, of course, if you have four transistors instead of two, they have the power, they have the output impedance. So matching is significantly easier at, at twice the impedance output. So this is an, a new approach, and we have quite a few people already implementing this. And it's quite, quite repeatable in production and very stable. Uh, so very good. Uh, try to sum it up. Uh, with a significant performance uh, we can get with this significant size reduction, we think there's a huge value and a huge argument for asking our customers to use this kind of component uh, because of the advantages we add. Uh, also because the high performance and the small size, if you're buying 700 or 2.7, we can offer the same footprint for all the different bands. So you can have more of a common casting. And of course, your matching network is going to be different for different frequencies and different transistors. But because of the Doherty combiner available in the same size, shape, uh, we're able to add uh, some ease in manufacturing. And we'll take it a, a step further and say like new topologies, like I showed this balanced dual Doherty approach, if you want to call it that, is a whole different way of, of doing a Doherty amplifier and has some good performance advantages, of course. There's some trade-offs with costs of buying four transistors at half the power, then two bigger ones, and that, that's something that has to be evaluated, all of it together. Uh, but with the low loss, and, and if we combine it with our directional couplers, we also offer like 0.05 dB insertion loss directional couplers. We'll argue that you can even eliminate the use of a high-performance PCB and go to a cheaper PCB altogether because it's really only because of the insertion laws and performance requirement of the output of your PA that you need the whole PCB to be high performance. If we can provide you the high performance Doherty combiner and low loss, high performance uh, directional couplers, you can basically, we think, uh, get away with a significantly cheaper, a lower cost uh, PCB. So we hope that uh, it's of interest. I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, you have related to this. Uh, but we definitely think this can be a, a good uh, solution for your Doherty power amplifier. Thank you very much for your time.